Good morning, everyone. This is Sarah B. Hansen, getting ready to teach you a fun project on, uh, maybe for Mother's Day, actually, um, on painting a loose and splashy daisy. So this should be easy from beginner to intermediate and um, just have fun with it. Don't get too stressed about the drawing or the colors and just to really enjoy your time today. You first want to draw your daisy onto your paper. Once you have your daisy drawn in, you'll wanna go ahead and begin to watercolor it. So you can use any blue, combination of blue, green, or actually any color you'd like to use. Um, today, like I said, I'm going to start out with Antwerp. And to begin with, you will wet the back of your paper behind your flower. So I'm going to come right up into the flower. This is clear water. And I'm just adding just basically clean, clear water to the back of my paper, filling in all of the areas up to the petals and right to the border. So you can see I've added a little square border around this, a little rectangle in pencil. So I didn't mention that earlier, but go ahead and do that before you start drawing. Uh, I'm sorry, before you start painting. That will give you a border outline to follow, or you could just take it all the way to the edge of the paper. So go ahead and, and with clear water, with clean, clear water, outline your whole daisy, the whole flower, coming right up into the stem, skipping over to the other side and getting everything nice and wet. All right, so as you can clearly see, or maybe you can't clearly see, um, I have wet the entire background behind my flower, going right up to the border I've wet it with clean, clear water. I've avoided the stem here, and I've avoided this little leaf, so those are dry areas, and come up right up to the border with clear water. If I have puddles right now, or rivers, you wanna just take your paper towel to the side and let it just sip that up. Tilt your paper if you need to, and just sip up some of that water so you don't have rivers, ponds, puddles, um, basically running water anywhere on your paper. And you don't wanna dab within the paper necessarily. You just want to allow that paper towel to just sip up the extra water by having it drink the edges of the corners there. Starting with the um, petal area, you want to mix, get your brush wet here. Um, make sure it's nice and wet. Make sure your paint's very um, uh, hydrated and stir up some paint. We wanted this to be fairly dark, okay? So I'm getting a lot of this Antwerp, um, is Antwerp blue? Uh, Antwerp blue, yeah. Antwerp blue onto my brush. So see how dark that is? It's getting nice and dark. It's pretty wet too. So before all of this dries, you wanna move pretty quickly. And come into the corner here, the edges of the petals and drop in that beautiful blue color. Any blue color works, um, but go ahead and grab that and, and it should run on out into all of this wet area. You might wanna push it just a little bit into there. And come in with your darkest dark right in next to the petals. I'm wetting my brush. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this serpentine green now. And the only reason I'm doing that is to give my, um, my background behind this, just a little bit of variety. So you can see how that color is flowing out into all of these areas here. And wet my brush again, I'm trying to keep this very liquidy, um, like milk or perhaps even cream. You want it to flow across the surface of your paper um, easily, wherever your paper is wet. Um, and just fill in the background here you don't want it to be dry, it, it, you don't want it to be so dry that it doesn't move across your paper. So again, every once in a while, I change my color up and I grab the green. And again, you can use any color you want to. It doesn't have to be green, it could be anything. Coming into this edge down here with my Antwerp, filling it in really nice and deep and dark. Get those colors saturated in there. Oh, you know what, I forgot to mention too, if you want to, if you grab a water bottle beforehand, 
you can have some nice um, spritzing kind of sparkles we can add. Okay, as I'm moving away from my petals, I'm going to allow my paints to get just a little bit lighter because um, I want the darkest dark right next to my petals there. Hopefully your paper is still wet down here because you want that, paper, that paint to move across your paper very freely. Okay, I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm going to go ahead and go into this other side, get some more Antwerp. There's a stem coming up to the flower there, so I'm gonna avoid that area. Avoiding the stem area, completely that white spot, that white line there is the stem. And grabbing a little bit more green. Look at that color, isn't that fun? I love it. Okay. Fill all this in down here, up to the bottom. Okay. And now if you want to, you can take some salt or your spray bottle. Okay, while your paint is still wet in the background, I'm gonna get just a little bit of salt in your hand, just a little bit of table salt, regular table salt, and sprinkle it across your flower background. Not very much, that's all it takes, just a tiny bit there, okay? And then if you would also like to, um, you can grab a little sprayer and spray lightly the surface of that. Very, did you see how I did that? Just a light spritz. And what that does is gives us another layer of texture. Now take some time and blow dry your painting completely. All right, once your painting is completely dry, and you can air dry it or blow dry it, um, but it needs to be totally dry, no wet marks anywhere, you'll want to take your hand and brush off that salt on there. So brush off as much of that as you can. Oops, see that's what happens if, um, if your paint is a little bit wet, and mine was right there, it'll smear into your flower. Well, we're gonna ignore that right now because we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? So get that salt off of there. And I'm gonna blow dry this just a little bit more. Off, you can see the difference in the texture here. Some of these little pieces back in here are salt and the bigger ones are the splashy water parts. So kind of fun. All right, so next step, what we will do on the next step is go ahead and fill in the center of the flower with some yellow. So I'm going to, you can't see it very well, but I've got some new gamboge here some here. So a little bit of new gamboge in the center of my flower. And right where that, go ahead and get, load up with some gamboge, get it in there, or any type of yellow. Any type of yellow works. Leave a few white spaces. Rinsing off my brush, dragging it across the top of my container to get some of the water out. And then I'm getting a yellow that has a little bit more brown in it, and this is Aussie Red Gold. You can see it right here. And this is going to add some dimension to the interior of my flower, where there might be shadows. So while that yellow, the first yellow, the new gamboge is wet, I'm going to lay in a little bit of that um, Aussie Red Gold in here and just dab it and a couple little fun dots out there. Dab it along the edge to give it a feeling of maybe some shadow. And while that is drying, I'm gonna leave that alone. You can blow dry it now if you want to, um, but we're gonna leave that area alone for now. I'm wetting my brush. I'm going to start filling in the stem just a little bit. And the stem, to differentiate itself from the background, is going to be lighter in value and have just a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm mixing the green and the yellow on my palette. A little bit more yellow there. And here's part of the stem back here. Comes up here. And then I'm just going over some of the stem, not all of it. And then, can you see that? Yeah, you can, okay. Filling in this leaf here. And I'm going past my border, just for fun, little design, to bring the stem up and into the painting leaving some areas of white. And then I'll add just a touch warm yellow into some of these areas. And this is um, Aussie Red Gold, charging it with just a 
just a teeny touch of that color in there in some areas and you can kind of see it okay and then go ahead and dry it again completely okay now this flower you can see here has a touch of, of shadow in the petals. So you can look at your photograph uh, if you need reference as to where those shadows are. But um, we will do it with just a touch of cobalt. So I'm rinsing my brush off again, dragging it across the surface of the water container, and I'm getting some cobalt. Now the key here is to make sure you have a very, very, very faint amount of this cobalt or any type of blue that you have very faint so a lot of water in it don't it wants to be very very light not um not dark or it's not going to look like a shadow okay so i will just add a touch of the shadow into some areas on on the um daisy flower and it might look kind of funny at first but then as you keep putting it in there and then once you dry it you will see that it becomes a really pretty, gives it some dimension. So go ahead and add shadows into all these areas on the daisy. You can get a little bit more paint if you need to, but be very cautious. You can always add more if you need to later, but it's really hard to, to take it away. Okay. And now I'm softening a couple of those edges with just a damp brush and now we're gonna dry it one more time okay once you've dried your painting completely um, you can go through and add another layer of dark color if you'd like to like glaze over it with the same colors you can wet the background again up to the petals do another layer of glaze if it seems too light I didn't have to do that with this one because I used Antwerp and it's a really dark color so it worked pretty well um, and as you can see there's a nice contrast between the white of the petals and the black or the dark background um, you can make this color a little bit more intense in here if you'd like to um, we'll add another layer of glaze here or any part on the stem um, and then once you've done that you can go ahead and draw in a sharpie and you take a, a thin um, it's called an ultra fine point sharpie if you want to and basically just go around the edges of your flower petals and make it up if you want to you know you don't have to follow the exact same lines as you have in there find all of those edges of your of your flower and go around everything and then go around the border as well alrighty so I'll show you what I did here. I went around all, the, outlined all the petals um, and the rectangle with my Sharpie pen. Um, don't use a ruler. I mean, just let it go, let it be free. The jagged uh, lines in here are fun and simple. There's open spaces. Um, don't get caught up in perfection. And in fact, I think uh, the less perfect it is, the better it is, really. Watercolor is meant to be playful, and um, I think, at least. But uh, So anyway, um, that, my friends, is the Daisy Painting Class. Look at these. I hope you all had fun painting along with me here today. And um, Facebook me, you know, email me. Let me know how these turn out. Uh, it's always enjoyable for me to see, you know, what you guys have done and and all that. So um, take care of yourselves today. Take care of each other. Um, and if you're doing this for Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to your mother or to you if you're a mother. <laughs> so, um, well, anyway, that's it for me. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>